Hello, I am back with episode four of my weekly vlog, which I didn't do for like uh, a month, two months. Don't don't go back and check. Um, but I'm back, and I just decided to do this now because I I sort of been forgetting. But so much has happened. Um, spring, if it wasn't out by the la the time I did the last um, vlog, spring. The first record of the four records I am doing for uh, 2022 is out now. It's been streaming now for two months, and so I've gotten to see the reception, and I've gotten to uh, see people take it in. That's been really fun, and it has been great. It's been illuminating. It's been exciting to share the music with people. And of course, while I've been trying to promote Spring on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and all the places, and also live and in person playing live shows, I've also been working on summer and autumn and even winter, which isn't so far away anymore. So the first single from summer is called I Don't Want to Be Here Anymore. I wrote it with my friend Jillian, who uh, goes by the stage moniker Sprightly. That song comes out next Friday, which is exciting. And... It's a f uh, all of the music I've been working on has been uh, like much poppier and uh, and that's been really fun but challenging because when you're writing music that's supposed to be more like pop or closer to folk pop than to like folk music, it needs more production. It needs more um, time spent in front of the computer figuring stuff out and less time spent on the the songwriting, the meaning, the the heart. And so, and by the way, that's not a judgment. Uh, one of the things I like about different kinds of music and trying to incorporate a lot of different kinds of music into this project is that, you know, everything has, its, has a place and everything has value. So some music, what you like about it the most is just like that it is like really funky and that can be enough. Or something you might like about a song is like, that it just the lyrics or just the melody and you've never listened to the lyrics or just the tone of the guitar. So, you know, I think it's been fun to explore those parts of my craft that are like, maybe I'm not as good at, you know, cause I think I'm a pretty good songwriter, but I don't think I'm as good of a producer. So it's good to like learn and grow and try things in those new areas. And it leads to fun surprises. Um, a, you'll notice that my space is super different than the last time I was recording. I mean, it, obviously it's nighttime right now, but um, I also moved. And so now I have a little studio space of my very own for the first time. I'm not doing everything with my bed in one half of the room and my, uh, my entire music setup in another half. Instead, I have a piano, I have my drum kit and guitars in here and a studio desk and it's really, really nice to be able to have these here, not the least of which is because as somebody who struggles with separating work-life balance, it's so great to be able to go into another different room in your house and work and then go to a different room. Uh, so, you know, I've often envied people who like have um, like an office to go to. I don't envy an, the office work, but I love the idea of the separation of your space and having that, uh, a separate space to be creative. So I feel really lucky. Hopefully I'll be able to stay in here for a little bit and finish the season's project in here. So um, that was a huge undertaking. It's like sometimes life just like plops down a big challenge. Like moving was huge for me. Like that sort of just chewed up uh, 10 days, 14 days that were like crucial days to record summer and I just couldn't do it because I had to move and I had to pack boxes and and assemble furniture and just physically do things so when you're running running on a really tight timeline that can be like a total uh wrench in the gears but I'm in here now and it's funny part of what I meant to do with this vlog process is record the week by week emotional ups and downs of creating the project so to give you a fill-in of kind of where I came from, releasing Spring felt so great, and it also felt a little bit like, like, um, 
like relief and also like a little bit of grief, like, oh, the record is out there and I can't change it and I hope it's good. And then the thing that happens when you release something is like the world doesn't stop turning on its axis. Like people listen to it and they're like, that was good or that was bad or whatever. Like it's, of course it can mean a tremendous amount to people, but at the core it's, um, it's unlikely that like the world will stop for your art and like everything will change. And by the way, I've also had the experience uh, on the other side where you make art and it does seem like the world like totally is all about what you're doing in that moment because I was on a TV show called Watchmen on HBO and I did that show and then there was a period of time when it won every Emmy and Barack Obama wrote about it and, and it was in all the news articles and all the things and it I have now experienced the the highs of that and the lows of creating something and having everyone go like mm, okay and so I can tell you if you're a creative and you're you're wondering oh god I just wish one time that I could have that successful feeling like it doesn't feel that different or at least it didn't for me like the experience of those high highs it was like there was a lot I could share on social media and, and there was a lot of hype I could give myself, I guess. But the functional inner emotional experience was roughly the same. It was, I did this thing, I've completed this thing, some people are talking about it or not talking about it, but you're not like, it. it nothing is happening. Nothing is different. You're still in your body, in your feelings, in your, you're moving through life and time and the important things in your life, like your connections with other people are exactly the same. So take it from me if you are working on your creative project and maybe you've released it and it didn't go so great or, you know, this can apply to a lot of different things, I think, but, you know, I have had those high highs and I've had those low lows and I'll tell you that it's more a, it's your, you won't be emotionally satisfied either way. That emotional satisfaction only comes through like <laughs> much deeper things than you can get through art or commerce. So that was my uh, spiel on happiness. Um, speaking of happiness, they say you can't buy it, but I did get this piano and playing a in tune piano it's a it's a young chang which is not the nicest piano they're essentially like korean knockoff yamahas um but it's a young chang u3 which is a really gorgeous upright and i love the way it sounds and uh, playing it is just such a delight you know and um yeah i would be uh remiss also if i didn't say that like releasing music right now is also interesting because I live in America and America is in a really intense political moment and a really intense um, moment in our history. Roe Ro was overturned. The Supreme Court decision of Roe was overturned yesterday. Um, the way I processed and worked through some of my feelings about that was I wrote, oh, my monitor went all blue, uh, was I wrote a song and then I shared that song. That felt good to me. Um, but I know everyone processed it differently. But it, it is, no matter what your job, like what kind of job you do, you, a lot of people I think had the unique experience of like, you're supposed to just sort of like keep operating, even though it feels like the world is like almost unbearably strange or wrong. And you know, that feeling is, I don't think, uncommon. So I was writing about that, but it's like a snake eating its own tail because by writing about that, I'm doing my thing that I do, my job or whatever, and then by sharing it or promoting it, it can, it can feel so false and so like, like, look at me, look at me, like in, you know, at a moment when Obviously, the intention is to give support to others who would need it more. So it can be a head trip, being my point. And I don't have any answers there, but I do think, um, yeah, trying to like 
de-center yourself if you're going to make art about politics or about the state of the world, trying to de-center myself <laughs> while also trying to write about my experiences and my experience of moving through the world. Complicated, nuanced, not something I can figure out in real time here on a vlog. But um, Seasons is going really well. I want to say that. And with Summer being almost complete, I sent out, I've sent out five of the, the songs to mix. I sent all five of them out in the last seven days. So it was like, it's like when you're spinning all the plates and then suddenly you can put down a bunch of them. I really was able to breathe a sigh of relief because I think that that officially marks like the halfway point on this project. I still have a little bit more of summer to produce, record, mix, and eventually release. But I I can feel the tread, like I can feel the tread tires gripping on. I'm 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 getting a grip hold. I'm mixing metaphors, but I feel like I'm getting a grip on the entire project, which really up until this point has has felt so overwhelming as as a big, you know, opus project. So it's exciting to be able to um, to see a finish line, even if that finish line is seven months away. And yeah, it's the only way I'll get it done is just one one goal at a time. And then, of course, the other exciting thing is that Autumn, uh, we have all the arrangements, the big band arrangements done. And there's been a change there because I was originally planning to do Autumn all big band tunes recording, you know, it's these 18 horn players and a bassist and a drummer in, in a big studio. And the problem is, of course, that got very expensive. So I had to, about uh, halfway into the project, I had to relook at my goals and relook at my, you know, my budget and go, okay, what can I actually do that's not going to be outrageous for how like commercially successful I am right now in my life. So I rethought the project. Now it's going to be four tunes in the in the big studio, uh, which is going to be great. And then I'm going to do another day with a small ensemble, piano, uh, drums, upright bass, maybe one horn player, and me. And we're going to do more like a, a Chet Baker sings kind of really laid back uh, jazz kind of vibe. And so that'll be kind of the split. There'll be four songs like that, three songs in a more laid back arrangement style. So I think that'll be really fun. The more I thought about it, the more I was like, oh, that's actually like more of a full record because it has more than one flavor. So again, it's a lot of compromises, a lot of being willing to bend with the moment and see how things adapt and change. And so yeah, that's where this project is right now. I've been talking for 13 minutes. So, um, yeah, that's where we are. Who knows where it'll be next week. Um, it feels weird to even, like, talk about this project with the state of the world, but I did want to keep documenting this process. And um, I think that there's room for everything in the world. So... Uh, yeah, that's where we are, and please, uh, donate to an abortion fund, and, uh, yeah, I will see you, <laughs> I won't say next week, because I've been, I've been, I've lied to you too many times, so I'll see you when I see you.